Good evening. I'm Geraldine Sin. And I'm Matthew Willowakondua. On Monday, 16th April, the Attorney General and the Minister for Public Enterprises, Mr. Aya Syed Kayum, announced the successful corporatization of the Fiji Electricity Authority, which has been rebranded as Energy Fiji Limited, or EFL. Along with the change in its name, he also stated that EFL would be offering 5% of its shares to the customers for free. Here to discuss these changes in detail, we have our guest for tonight, EFL CEO Mr. Hasmuk Patel and the Deputy Chairman Mr. Gardner Whiteside. Good evening and welcome to the show. Good evening. Good evening. Now, of course, to lead up uh, straight into it, why the change? Well, the government had its plan uh, to reform the organization for the betterment uh, of all Fijians. Uh, and as part of the reform, uh, the company had to be partially divested. And as part of the divestment exercise, the government considered it fit that 5% of the shares of the corporatized entity be offered to the domestic customers of EFL for nil consideration. Now with the change in its name, it's being rebranded from an authority to a limited, it's become corporatized now. That doesn't mean any job losses, doesn't mean any changes to the structure of the company, or does it? Well, uh, for the time being, obviously, there's no changes. Uh, the Honorable Attorney General uh, in his speech that night made it very clear that there won't be any job losses and as far as the structure of the organization is concerned obviously as we move down the line uh, towards the entire divestment program uh, there could be organizational changes uh, to ensure that we bring about more efficiencies uh, better performance and all that but uh, that's along the line and as we go along uh, we'll see what are the changes that are necessary to make the organization perform better but for the time being, no job losses. If I can just uh, add to that, uh, the Fiji Electricity Authority is a statutory authority that was uh, constituted under the Electricity Act of 1966. Uh, it is now a uh, public company. Uh, it was uh, under the provisions of the Public Enterprise Act. Well, this particular offer, could you go into more detail about the offer for domestic customers? Yes. Well, the offer, first of all, uh, for clarity's sake, the offer is being made to the domestic customers of EFL mm. and not the commercial or industrial or institutional customers. As far as the domestic customers are concerned, presently we have two categories. One is the subsidized customers and the other are the non-subsidized domestic customers. Obviously, whether you are a subsidized customer or not, you have to meet the criteria. This is a certain criteria that you have to meet. And for clarity's sake, very quickly, I will tell you what the criteria is. That if a particular household, you know, which is being supplied electricity by EFL, then if their combined annual income is $30,000 or less, then they do qualify for subsidy. Now, if you qualify for subsidy and have already been registered as a subsidized customer, then you will receive 250 non-voting shares. And if you are a non-subsidized domestic electricity customer of EFL, then you will receive 150 non-voting shares. Now, when you say that people can apply for these shares, there may be some confusion as to how that works because you've got the shares for the customers, but then you may have people who have one account, but they have multiple meters. Like you have someone who has, for example, a couple of flats that are out for rent, and each one gets a separate bill. What does that mean for that particular customer that has multiple meters but one account? Okay. Uh, you could be having a number of accounts in your name. Yeah. because you have multiple flats or multiple uh, properties. Uh, now you will be only qualifying for one set of shares, one parcel of shares. So even if you have 10 electricity accounts in your name in the domestic sector, mm -hmm. you will still only be eligible for one parcel of shares. With the shares that are available now, of course the uh, opening was on Friday, that was the uh, 20th and the closing date is coming up uh, in next month. Now, how do people apply for these shares? Well, uh, there are a number of ways of applying for the shares. Is, uh, you could go online on the EFL website and fill in an application form and send it back to EFL. Uh, 
we have we will be sending out from tomorrow onwards yeah. we'll be posting the application forms uh, to all the uh, eligible domestic customers and you could fill in that form and uh, post it to EFL uh, you could also go on to our website uh, and basically download the form and then send it online uh, we will also be opening up temporary customer care centers from tomorrow throughout the country uh, the opening times of these temporary customer care centers uh, have already been actually advertised mm -hmm. in the Fiji Sun and we will continue to do so on a regular basis. We will also be putting out ad on the radio stations to inform these domestic customers where and when these temporary customer centers will be open. So the other option is you could go down to one of these temporary customer care centers uh, with your completed application form and you could lodge it out there uh, with proof of your Fiji citizenship and residency and uh, there are a number of ways as I said you could fill it and post it you could do it online or you could come to these temporary customer care centers and lodge your application. Uh, at these particular customer care centers that you'll be placing throughout the country obviously they will have uh, people who speak the many different languages that we have here in this country so I'm assuming that all these people are well versed and able to communicate better with those who might not understand the how this works out for them. No, we have had some training imparted, you know, yeah. to all the staff who will be actually manning these temporary care centers, you know, customer care centers. And obviously, you know, we have the three languages in Fiji, and we will have staff out there who will be able to communicate in any one of these three languages. Thank you for that. Now, quickly, just with the shares that are being offered, of course, the uh, government has stated that it will be for free. Once again, to clarify, citizens who would like to apply for these shares, they don't have to pay for anything when they apply for these shares, correct? Correct. The shares are being offered free. And when they are given these shares, what does that mean? What do they receive in return? They will receive uh, the number of shares that they applied for. So they will receive a share certificate, either for 150 shares for the uh, non-subsidized rate holders or rate payers or 250 shares for the subsidized account holders. Thank you very much for that. We'll be back with more after the break. Welcome back to the show. Now, Mr. Patel, just to clarify further, with the eligibility criteria for ordinary uh, Fijian citizens who would like to apply for these shares, what are they specifically? They, there are basically three criteria. The first one is you should be an account holder. That means the electricity account should be in your name. That's the first criteria. Of course, domestic customer. The second criteria is that you should be a Fiji citizen. That means you should have a Fiji passport. And in the event you do not have a passport, then your voter registration card will suffice to prove that you are a Fiji citizen. And the third and final criteria is that you should be resident in Fiji. Not only should be a Fiji citizen, but you should be residing in Fiji. So if you meet all these three criteria, then you become eligible to receive those shares. Say, for example, in the event of someone who has an account, but uh, it does happen in Fiji, where, I, so for example, if I'm living in a house, but it belonged to my uncle, and the bill is still coming under his name, but I pay for it, he may be deceased or he may not no longer be in the country. How do we go about that? Well, in that particular case, if the account holder, as we speak, at, at the cutoff point on 16th April, if the account is in the name of your uncle, then actually he will qualify. As and not I. And not you, mm -hmm. provided he is still a Fiji citizen and resident in Fiji. So in a situation like that, if I wanted to uh, have some shares, then I would have to have the account transferred, correct? You could do that, you know. Presently, if you are not an account holder, and if you are saying that you are paying the bills, you know, then there is provision uh, within, F within EFL procedures of how you could transfer names, you know, from, from an account holder to yourself. There are certain requirements that has to be met. And if the account comes into your name, then going forward, you could be eligible just for receiving the shares. Just to clarify that, brother, the application form uh, asks the applicant to set out what the the details of uh, the account holders, 
account number and you must also attach your either a copy of your passport and your voter registration card. With those shares, of course, you're giving it not only to those who are subsidized, but also to non-subsidized customers. And then, of course, you may also have provisions in place for future customers, correct? Yes. Uh, initially, you know, we are looking at those customers who qualify immediately. So once you receive an application form or you wish to access our website and download it, whichever way, that's fine. Uh, once you complete an application form and lodge it in with EFL, by post or through our temporary customer care centers, then we'll verify all the information and determine whether you qualify to receive any shares. So initially, uh, those customers who qualify, they will be offered shares or issued shares in due course, but there'll be a certain amount of shares that we will also put in a trust where a trustee will be looking after those shares. So these are for future customers. So you may not be a customer of EFL presently, domestic, but you know, going down the line in two months or three months, the grid get extended, you know, near your homes, mm -hmm. and you do become a customer, then you can still apply at that point in time. There will be provisions for future customers to actually apply and qualify to become a shareholder or receive shares. In an what incident that? like that, of course, <laughs> it would probably mean that those who uh, would be hoping to get connected to the grid with the rural electri electrification project, uh, rather, they have hope yet that even though they're not on the grid yet, you'll still have shares set aside for them, and when they do have an account, they can apply. Yes, we, we have allocated, or shall I made provision for 25 million non-voting shares. So in the initial, shall I say, offer, we do not expect all the 25 million shares to be issued. Because, you know, we are familiar with the number of customers, you know, who basically could qualify. And should we offer the 120, 150 and 250 as per subsidized and non-subsidized, we will not be exhausting all the 25 million. So the remaining shares then will be put into a trust which will be looked after by a trustee. And future customers then could apply and receive those shares. Yeah, that application will need to be submitted to the trustee. The trustee will have the requirements uh, that need to be fulfilled for you to be allocated those shares. Those requirements will be very similar to what is required now, but should the trustee have further requirements, then you would have to meet those requirements to be eligible for those shares. What about the timetable for all of this? What would you advise the customers listening in right now? Yes, uh, as you, uh, the customers may have seen in the papers, we have given that information, but nevertheless, uh, the, the open the offer open on the 20th of April and it'll be closing on the 29th of May at 4 p.m. Mr. Whiteside, when the uh, offer is made, how does the ordinary citizen accept the offer and uh, what happens if they don't you know send in their application before the closing date? Well you accept the offer by filling in the application form and uh, se sending this either to uh, FEA or to all those centers yes. that we had referred to earlier mm -hmm. right. If, uh, if you are eligible uh, for the allocation of those shares and for some reason you have not uh, submitted your application in before the 29th of May, you can always do that later. And so long as you are able to establish that you are eligible for those shares as, as a, the initial date, you will be uh, allocated those shares. Now, what happens if a customer, uh, sorry, if, if someone becomes a customer of EFL after the record date? That's future customers. That's future customers. Absolutely. That is. So once the once the closing date of 29th goes past, and you become a customer thereafter, as I said earlier, there will be a certain amount of shares held in trust. Will those shares be free though? Oh, they'll be free as well. Even then. Yes, yes. They'll be transferred on absolutely the same terms as they are being done now. And what is the purpose of this offer? Why is the government offering this initiative to ordinary Fijians now? Well, the idea is, you know, obviously uh, we want, uh, you know, Fijians to take part in the energy sector, of course. Uh, and uh, uh, as part of the divestment exercise, you know, we're trying to make sure that uh, we get a strategic investor as well, mm -hmm. because that will bring in international best practice, which will benefit the energy sector in Fiji. We also want the private sector uh, to come and invest in the renewable energy space because as you know, 
EFL already has a mission to become 90% renewable by 2025, and the government has a target to become 100% renewable by 2030. So obviously we need uh, international partners to come, especially from the private sector, to come and help us. So that actually brought about the divestment exercise. And the government considered fit that the ordinary Fijian, who are basically the ratepayers of FEA, domestic sector, be given, you know, and they do take part in this energy industry as well. And do you have interest in investors right now? Uh, you mean the strategic investors, the mm. big ones? Yes, there have been competitive bids called for yeah. uh, by the government, and they are presently being looked at and assessed. And uh, that decision of a strategic investor will be made going down the line, and that process could take uh, uh, a year or so. But uh, we're looking at the entire divestment process to be complete by around March 2020. But this initial offer to the ratepayers of FEA, we want to do the first bite right now and then hold the remaining shares in trust and that will be for future customers. Thank you for that, Mr. Patel. We'll be back with more after the break. Welcome back to the show. Mr. Whiteside, what are the rights with, um, associated with holding non-voting shares? Well, the shares that are being transferred are non-voting shares. Mm. So uh, as a shareholder, you will not be able to vote at the uh, general meetings of the okay. company. But they're dividend earning shares. So you'll be, uh, you'll be able or you will qualify for dividends that are being declared by the company. But they're non-voting dividend earning shares. When you say that they'll be able to earn dividends, the ordinary Fijian, of course, doesn't have uh, many stocks or many you know, shares in certain companies. What does that actually mean? What is a dividend? What, what is a payout? What can they expect? Depends on the uh, dividends that are declared by the company each year. Okay. Now, the intention is that uh, the dividends that will be declared to, be sh to shareholders will be credited to the electricity account of that particular shareholder. So depending on the profits that the company makes for a particular year and the dividends that the uh, company decides to declare for that year, the shares um, that are transferred now will, will entitle you to a portion of the dividend. Now looking at the uh, previous year's performance of FEA, now known as EFL, you've recorded uh, some profits. Say, for example, in 2015, you recorded quite a large uh, profit with that. And that means that ordinary Fijians can expect some payout, especially those from low-income uh, households, correct? Yeah. Well, uh, we, we, you know, we, we're going forward. So basically, we're not going to go backward to 2015. Yeah. And the shares that are being offered, you know, to the electricity customers, to electricity customers of EFL, Obviously, once they get the shares, we expect to issue the shares, uh, the first lot of shares, by around middle of June. So thereafter, uh, the dividends will actually become payable, you know, once, uh, obviously, in the future years going forward. So we're not going to go back to 2015, as you mentioned. But going forward, once you become a shareholder, then if the company does well financially and dividends are declared, then as Deputy said, you know, that uh, you'll be entitled to a dividend, uh, depending on the number of shares you hold, and uh, we could credit that dividend amount against your electricity account, and should you prefer otherwise, uh, that could also be considered. And apart from that, are there any other benefits to holding Well, yeah, shares? you know, over, over a period of time, once uh, EFL becomes listed on the South Pacific Stock Exchange, then obviously the shares could undergo a capital appreciation. So, for example, once the trading starts, and if the value of the shares goes up, then obviously the value of your shares are also going up. So you benefit. Mr. White said, what body would be regulating, of course, the functions of EFL now, now that it's become a corporatized uh, company? Well, we will come under the ambit of the Companies Act, basically. Previously, Fiji Electricity Authority used to operate under the Electricity Act and also the Public Enterprises Act, you know, and obviously various other acts which we had to comply with, you know, in terms of the laws of the country. But now that we are a reformed entity, uh, a public company limited by shares, uh, we will come under the Companies Act directly. But there will be other laws as well. The, the company will also, also intends to list its shares with the South Pacific yeah. Stock Exchange. So obviously the South Pacific Stock Exchange has certain regulations that need to be met. So the company will also come under those regulations. 
we will be, be able to sell these shares, these non-voting shares? Yes. Once the company is listed on the South Pacific Stock Exchange, then you can say formal trading will start okay. on a day-to-day -day basis. Initially, there are restrictions on the sale of these shares because the entire divestment process hasn't taken place and also the company has not been listed on the stock okay, exchange. Yeah. But once it is formally listed on the stock exchange, then these shareholders who hold even non-voting shares will be able to trade their shares should they wish to. Once that happens, of course, because you are giving these shares to ordinary Fijians, not everyone has a business background. Once the uh, shares are going to be eligible to be uh, traded off on the SP, uh, South Pacific Stock Exchange, that is, are there plans in place to hold any sort of, um, you know, capacity building training with customers to sort of advise them on how they can go about getting that done because maybe they might get duped into not knowing how to have best business practices and with their shares and all? Yes, I think that will follow in due course of time. Uh, uh, basically because, uh, you know, once they are listed on the South Pacific Stock Exchange, they could also go to SPSE and seek advice regarding trading because SPSE also provides some information on the trading of shares of all those companies that are listed on the stock exchange. But as far as EFL is concerned, of course, if anyone wants any information regarding how to trade and all that in due course of time, we will be having that unit out there you know, who will impart that information should a customer wish to know more about how to trade and all that. Would you happen to have maybe a, a team uh, set up within EFL that would be advising customers on how to go about getting this done? Of course, I think, you know, I mean, they are our customer and they are holding shares, they are a shareholder. So should they wish to acquire more information or knowledge, we will have a unit who will actually make sure that that sort of information is imparted to the customers and shareholders. Why are non-voting shares subject to initial disposal, disposal restrictions? Yeah, well, because you cannot start trading, you know, once uh, without being listed, you know what I'm yeah. saying? It's difficult to manage it, you know what I'm saying? Uh, once they are on the list, then there is a price put on the share, and you know exactly that if, should you sell, what is the price you are selling for and all that. Eh? So the, the entire framework has to be set up and it's in place once it becomes listed in the SPSE. Now how was FEA converted to EFL in the first place? As I mentioned earlier, the uh, uh, FEA was, it was, it is a statutory authority that was constituted under the Electricity Act. Uh, under the provisions of the Public Enterprise Act, it was converted to a public company and is now registered under the Companies Act. And that being said, of course, this means that EFL is now, you know, one of government's commercial companies, correct? Does the government intend to partially divest its interest in EFL? Well, as I said earlier, uh, as part of the divestment exercise, the first, uh, shall I say, stage was to offer shares to the domestic electricity customers of EFL. But we are also, the government is also keen uh, to seek a strategic investor uh, and intend to sell 44% of the shares of EFL to the strategic investor or investors. And that process is already underway. Competitive bids have been called, as I stated earlier, and they are being process processed and looked at right now. So in the final st run, or shall I say, on completion of the divestment exercise, hopefully by March 2020, then you will have the government holding 51% shares, the strategic investor or investors holding 44% shares, and the domestic customers of EFL holding 5%. I'd like to get into more detail with the timetable, of course, with the shares that are being offered, but we'll be back with more after the break. Welcome back. Now, Mr. Whiteside, when can customers expect the offer letter and what else can they expect in it? The offer letter is uh, being dispatched to customers uh, on Friday and uh, the offer letter includes an application form together with a short form information memorandum. Now the information memorandum uh, sets out the details that a potential investor would possibly look at when considering whether or not to invest in a company. There is a long form of the information memorandum that you can access and that's on our website. Just further to that, the actual posting of the application forms uh, will commence, you know, from tomorrow. But from Friday, we have been able to put the application forms, you know, 
on our website. So should you wish to download it from the website, it's there. Mm. But uh, in terms of postage, it will commence from tomorrow. And uh, also, as Deputy said, there's the information memorandum, a short form, that will be posted to the customers, domestic customers. But there is a long form which is more detailed. That is also available on our website now. And some very limited hard copies are available should any customer wish to uh, come down and pick up a hard copy in the event they do not have the internet at their homes. You know? And do you have uh, ways that could help customers understand the memorandum better? If they, for some customers who might not, uh, uh, who might not understand the language better, we 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 have we have an information uh, toll free line one triple three. Yeah. Uh, if you prefer to go on the one triple three uh, line, you could also get more information or clarification. At the same time, uh, should you visit uh, our temporary care customer care centers, which I mentioned earlier, will be opened up from tomorrow uh, for the period of one month. Uh, the actual temporary customer care centers where it will be set up, the detailed information is available on our website. Also, we'll be making announcement on the radio stations where the centers will be, the operating times, and uh, for the information of uh, the domestic customers, uh, we will also be opening up these customer care centers on Saturdays and Sunday for their facility. Because, you know, should you be working on Monday to Fridays and not being able to go there and lodge in your forms to seek more information, we'll be opening them on Saturdays and Sundays as well from, I think, from 8.30 or 9 to about 6 in the evening. That's a wonderful initiative showing that EFL really does care for its customers having to go that much. Speaking of customers and, you know, how much EFL is doing for them, with the recent uh, events that we've had with the weather around the country, we've had a lot of power disruptions that have been happening. But uh, at the same time, EFL has also, uh, you know, sort of quickened up their response rate and their time in fixing these issues. However, there are some who are still in the dark about why certain things are taking time, why EFL takes a little bit more time to respond to certain um, complaints that they have. Yeah. Well, I think, uh, thank you for the question. I think uh, I, I need to, uh, I need to answer this one clearly for the benefit of all our customers. What really happens is, you know, in the event of a natural disaster like a cyclone, what really happens is our entire grid is affected, especially our power lines and power poles and wires and all. Uh, as a result of the floods, you could be having power poles being washed away. Uh, as a result of the winds, you know, then the power lines could be coming down. So what really happens is once the cyclone has passed away, then it's a huge exercise on the part of EFL. It's not that like when we switch off a light in the room and, you know, mm. then we can just switch it on. So it's not once the cyclone has gone past, we switch on, you know, what all our generators and all our feeders, as we call them. Because in the name of safety, safety is paramount. And we have to ensure that before we energize any power line, we need to ensure that the power line is intact. It is not unsafe. It is not lying on the ground broken which can end up in an absolutely hazardous situation and even death. So therefore, we have to inspect each piece of power line throughout the country. Now, just for the information of our customers, we have around 9,500 kilometers of power lines throughout the country. To add to the power lines, then we also have what we call the consumer mains. Now, yeah. this is that black wire that goes from the FEA power pole to your home. Now, in the event of a cyclone, even that could become detached and could be dangling in your compound somewhere. Yeah. Now, supposingly, if we thought our power lines are intact and we switched on the line, the lines may be intact. But if your consumer mains is broken and lying on the ground, then you could be have a live wire on the ground. And, you know, one of the family members, a small child especially, could come out in the compound and touch it. And you know what can happen. So to make sure that we do not have any cases of electric shocks and electrocution, any type of accident, we ensure that every piece of power line has been inspected thoroughly. The lines that need to be repaired, we repair it properly. And then systematically, we switch on the power lines to make sure everything is incident free and accident free. In cases like that, who pays for the repairs from the power pole to the customer's line? That's the customer's worry. So it's because that particular black mains that goes from the FEA power pole to the customer's premise, yeah. that is the property of the customer. Okay. So should that become damaged, then it's the customer's responsibility to hire the services 
of a licensed electrical contractor, and I emphasize licensed electrical contractor. Sometimes people do not go to a licensed contractor, but they just get hold of an electrician down the road, and that is illegal. And he could be even doing unsafe things. Some of the electrical accidents that have happened yeah. in, 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 you know, in the recent times has been because people have been hiding the services of non-licensed electrical contractors who carry out alterations of work in your homes without the knowledge of EFL, and in due course of time, it becomes a hazard in their homes, and there is an accident, and people have even died. So the message we like to give on behalf of EFL is during a cyclone, EFL has a big responsibility mm. of ensuring all these things are checked properly. And, and uh, I can say very proudly that uh, as I speak today, you know, we have completed practically 99.99% of the restoration work. There may be one or two small areas which we are not able to access because of still washed away rivers and things like that. Uh, or, you know, the access roads have been washed away and we are not able to get there. But practically 99.99% of the restoration has been completed. And I can say with pride that it was absolutely incident and accident free. Now that is the challenge to EFL. You know, and not that in the rush to, you know, restore power, you know, there are many, many incidences. Eh? So we'd like our customers to try and understand that sometimes people do come to me and say to me on the phone and they say, but you know, outside my house, when I look at the power lines, nothing has happened. Why come you're not switching on the power? Well, it's not only in front of your house or two, three hundred meters away from your house, because the power lines come to your house from a long distance and the entire line has to be intact mm. for successful transmission of power. Mm. So please, you know, we'd like to take this opportunity to actually thank all our customers for their patience. I must say the majority of the customers were very patient and actually cooperated with EFL in the power restoration work and we'd like to say thank you very much. Thank you for that, Mr. Patel. Now, Mr. Whiteside, uh, after the break, I'd like to uh, get into detail with the uh, rural electrification projects that EFL has in place and also with the uh, timetable for the shares that are on offer. More on that coming up after the break. Good evening and welcome back. Now, Mr. Patel, I'd like to touch very quickly on the rural electrification projects and plans that uh, EFL has for Fiji. Well, I must firstly uh, say with a lot of pride that in the last three to four years, the government has actually contributed in a big way towards rural electrification. Uh, presently, government uh, contributes 100% of the cost of RE. So if any rural community has not have access to electricity, they can make applications and whatever the cost is ultimately through the Ministry of Infrastructure and through the government's uh, Ministry of Economy, uh, the cost of the RE is being funded. So in the last three, four years, we have carried out many, many schemes, and especially in the 17-18 budget of the government, they have allocated some $32 million for rural electrification works. Uh, FEA right now is in full force executing those RE projects together with the help of some 20 contractors. And uh, we are progressing well, except for the last few weeks, uh, where you know, uh, we have been impacted you know, by the rains and all. And we had to divert our workforce and the contractors you know, to the restoration work. But uh, again, from next week, we'll be full speed on the RE work. And I'm sure uh, more RE work will follow in the next budget, because government has a target to ensure that every Fiji citizen has access to electricity by 2020. Thank you. Now, Mr. Whiteside, with the, uh, with the timetable for the transaction, with the shares that are being on offer, could you just, of course, once more just clarify when it ends and when the shares will be available? Yeah, the, we need to receive your applications for shares by the 29th of May. Uh, we are hopeful that uh, for the uh, qualifying shareholders, we, are, we will then post the uh, share certificates to the shareholders by the mid of June. And uh, we are hopeful that uh, at some time soon thereafter, the company will then be listed on the stock exchange. Mr. Patel, anything you'd like to add on to that? No, I'd like to stress to all our domestic customers who qualify for the acquisition of the shares, please come forward. This is a golden opportunity which has been offered by the government for ratepayers, domestic ratepayers of EFL to acquire shares. So please don't lose out on this opportunity. Uh, if you are not quite sure about what is involved, you know, we have our toll-free number, 1333, or please come and visit us at the nearest temporary care 
Pastor Makea sent us. I've said this before and I'd like to once again say that information regarding the opening of this temporary Pastor Makea centers, the information is available on the website and also we'll be putting this information on the various radio stations as well as in the Fiji Sun in a periodic manner. So please, if you're not aware of any information regarding the shares, you have a number of uh, ways to actually get in touch with us. The application forms are also on the website. We'll be posting them as well. And for the prepaid customers, we'll be visiting these areas in person and handing out the application forms. We want you to become shareholders of EFL. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, just to clarify, for those who are watching right now, if they happen to be domestic customers and they also happen to have a business, they can only apply as a domestic customer, not as part of their business, right? Absolutely. They have to be a domestic uh, shall I say customer, that means they have an account as a domestic customer. Should they have a business, that's something else. But as long as you're a domestic customer, you're a Fiji citizen, and you're a resident in Fiji, you qualify. Thank you very much for that, Mr. Patel and Thank Mr. You. Whiteside. Thank you for coming on the Thank show. You. That wraps up our show for tonight. Should you require any further clarification on the issues discussed regarding divestment tonight, you can contact Energy Fiji Limited or EFL by calling their toll-free short code 1333. You can also email your queries to customer.services at efl.com.fj, visit their website www.efl.com.fj or their Facebook page, Energy Fiji Limited. And we hope you enjoyed the show. Have a pleasant evening.